afternoon everybody happy friday welcome to my craft room so if it's friday and it's two o'clock it must be time for stamp and chat live again and i didn't check the date i meant to double check when i did my first one but i know it was november last year so we are pretty much at one year of doing these very nearly every friday i've missed a few fridays for holidays and things like that but pretty much i've been with you every week so thank you so much for joining me as always I'm just going to hop over to my iPad and make sure that I can see what you can see and hopefully all is well. Um, I haven't even attempted to use my separate microphone today because we've had so many issues with them recently and I know it's not the microphone because I've tested it so it must be a Facebook issue. So I will just try to speak loudly and clearly and if you're there could you let me know whether you can hear me or not, please, and whether you can see me. Oh, Carol's here. Hi Carol. She says she hopes she'll be able to see the comments this time. I know Carol had a technical issue last time. Um, doesn't seem to have been her end. Seems to be some weird Facebook thing again. You can never tell what's going to happen. Um, so it would be great, please, if you could let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, it looks like you can see me okay. Um, I can see me, so probably you can see me, but can you hear me? And I've only just this minute put some hand cream on, but my hands are so dry in this cold weather that I am just going to do it again while I wait for you to tell me if you can hear okay. Oh my goodness. Is your skin dry at the moment? What with the extra hand washing and the cold weather, my skin is not very happy. Okay, so Carol can hear me loud and clear. Fantastic, thank you, Carol. So Sandy's here. Uh, Sandy's sitting in Sainsbury's car park watching me. I tell you, I get around, Sandy. Uh, she's just had an eye test and Pete is having his now. Excellent. Well, my guess is you're not crafting in your car, Sandy, although maybe you are. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Sandy can hear okay. Brilliant. So it looks like the sound is okay. Uh, I can see Candy's here and Maureen's here. Fantastic. Uh, let me know if it gets dark as the afternoon goes on. Um, I've got my overhead lights on, which will cast a little bit of shadow, but I have got my extra light here ready to put on if we need it. Um, although it's bright outside, um, you know, it's been a lovely sunny day today. Uh, it's, you know, it's November, isn't it? Let's face it. So it's not as bright as it used to be. And Maureen can hear me okay. Brilliant. Thank you, Maureen. And hello to you. Okay, Maureen, while you're there, um, I have sent out your painted Christmas sampler today and I sent you an email to tell you I got everything early so I've sent them out early but your email got bounced back at me so I don't know why that was but um, <laughs> your sampler is on its way so um, hopefully you've, you've heard that okay and uh, that saves me having to fight the email system and try and, uh, and repeat send to you until it goes through. I don't know why it didn't go through. Technology. Okay, so what's new to, uh, this week? Well, this time last week I was uh, getting ready to run my customer thank you event which I normally run in May when we get the new catalogue. Um, but I wasn't able to for the last couple of years so instead I did it in November and it was a bit of a shock to have it on a dark evening because um, it's, it's usually late into you know light late into the evening but we had a good time we did some crafting um, it was lovely to catch up with people again and the people who came got to see people they haven't seen for a very long time which was really really nice um, and yes a good time was had by all so if you came to that event thank you very much indeed it was a lot of fun um, I had a busy card class yesterday, so that was really nice too. I'm, um, yeah, really enjoying getting back to crafting actually with people properly. Although this virtual thing is nice because there's some of you on here who live too far away to come and visit or do classes, and so it's really, really nice to be able to connect with you in a different way. Um, what's my weekend going to bring? Well, um, Tomorrow I've got a list as long as my arm of things to do, including boring stuff like the ironing 
um, and more exciting stuff like um, some Christmas lists and things like that and I'm going to do some baking and on Sunday I have a choir rehearsal which uh, takes up most of the day it's actually from lunchtime down through to um, the end of the afternoon but the route to get there has got two sets of roadworks on it so it takes me about two hours to get there and two hours to get back instead of about 50 minutes which is a bit of a pain but I am looking forward to singing again with everybody so tell me what are you doing over the weekend what have you been doing this week I would like to know we got any more comments let's have a look Sandy isn't crafting in her car but she's going to when she gets home good um, Carol is fussy cutting sledges and robins with the Be Jolly stamp set. Well, that sounds like fun, Carol. What are you going to do with them? Are you making cards? Are you doing boxes? Is it a secret? Um, Maureen, yeah, Maureen says, you, excellent. So you re yes, you received the email about the card class I posted. Yeah, and that one didn't bounce back. But then I sent a separate one to everyone who had ordered the painted Christmas sampler, which was you as well. And yours bounced back to me and I have no idea why. So you should have had two emails and you should be getting two brown envelopes next week. I didn't put them in together because I was a bit concerned that um, some things might damage your card packs. So I put that separately. But hopefully it will all arrive for you next week and you'll be able to have um, a very festive time crafting away. All right. Um, stamping up news. Um, the big news is that there's an absolutely fantastic promotion on at the moment for joining Stamping Up. Um, people often look at me and say, well, I don't want, want to do what you do. I don't want to run classes. Um, and that's OK. You can actually join Stamping Up and not run classes and um, not do parties and not sell your cards and not do anything like that at all, except all the crafting that you already do. The only difference if you join Stamping Up would be that you get a 20% discount on all the things that you're buying. So for me, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you want a 20% discount? Um, if you don't need a 20% discount, then maybe you would enjoy coming to some of the events that are for just for Stamping Up demonstrators locally. Um, I run some and other people run them. There are some run virtually as well. Uh, so you get to do some things that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise there. Maybe you'd really like to get some of the new things earlier and have a bit longer to play with them. Well, you can do that when you're a demonstrator. Um, maybe you'd like to get to meet some more people local to you who craft. And that's definitely something you can do when you're a demonstrator. So it doesn't matter whether or not you want to run classes, whether you want to run a business, earn some income or not. Um, it's a great time to join Stamping Up. Stamping Up call everybody demonstrators uh, when, when you join, but it doesn't mean you actually have to demonstrate to anybody at all. Um, but if you would like to, I can certainly support you and help you to do that. I have a really lovely team of people. Some are local, some are not local. And uh, we get together in person, we get together virtually, we craft together, um, and we just share a love of stamping and paper crafting generally. Uh, and yeah, we, we get it at a discount. Who wouldn't want to do that? So I mentioned a special offer, didn't I? Well, the special offer is that uh, you choose £130 worth of Stamping Up goodies from either of the catalogues and Stamping Up will send them to you and you'll only pay £75 for them. That's until the end of November. Yep, I'll say that again. Choose £130 worth and pay £75. Now, I think that's an amazing bargain. You don't even have to pay the shipping on it. Um, and then once that happens, you are a member of the Stamping Up family and you can stay as long as you like. If you want to drop at any time, there is nothing to pay back. There's nothing to give back. The whole time that you are a demonstrator, you can place your own orders and get your own discounts and you can carry on doing everything else you do at the moment. If you go to classes, you can keep going to classes. Um, but it's, it's just a brilliant time to do it. If you've got a long wish list, or if you know that when the new catalogue comes out in January, you're bound to have a long wish list, then it makes sense to join Stamping Up. If you join now, you'll actually get that catalogue and be able to order some of the things early before Christmas. So that's gonna be great fun. I haven't seen it yet, but I know I'm going to love things in that catalogue. If you'd like to know any more, then just let me know and I can send you more information. Or you can join straight away if you just go to my website at sallybowman.stampinup.net and you just click on the join tab um, and it's all set up there for you. 
I would love to share some of this with you. I know one or two of the people watching are demonstrators, a couple of them are in my team already. Um, but if you're not, give it, a, give it a little try. And if you're watching this on the replay, which I know ever such a lot of people do, I get many, many views on the replay, then you're still very welcome to contact me. The offer runs from now right and through until the end of November. Um, and it's a great deal. So uh, do think about it. Okay. Um, so... Maureen, right, Maureen's going to check the emails out. Okay, Maureen, hopefully it's just a, a funny glitch with that email. Carol is batch doing cards. She's already cut out the Santas and trees. Oh, well done, Carol. So Sandy says there are only 50 sleeps until Christmas and 40 days till she flies to Canada for Christmas and New Year. So she's going to be getting things ready to take with her. That is just so exciting, Sandy. I bet you absolutely can't wait. I know you count down to Christmas every year. You're just like my daughter. She does the same. Um, you've just about got to January the 2nd and then my daughter is counting down to the next Christmas. And you're, I don't think you're much different. I love the excitement of it all. Okay, I'm going to put my camera down and let's do some crafting. I'm going to cover you over for a minute. Let's fiddle with a few things and hopefully get you a really good view. Okay. Just adjusting the stand. No doubt I will have to do a little bit more once I reveal all, but I'm hoping that uh, we'll get a pretty good, good look at everything. Oh, and I've completely forgotten to adjust the settings, bother. Let's just do that and then I'll have to go back to where I was with the stand. Okay. So why doesn't that want to? I think I might have. Oh, that's really weird. I really don't want to have to work upside down today. I've got the button there, but it will not. Will not um, work. That's so odd. I ha <laughs> I'm, I'm wittering away here. I've got a reverse camera button on here. In fact, I've got two of them. And one of them is not wanting to work. Okay, well, if it's not going to work, I'm just going to have to stamp upside down. That is very strange. Okay, so everything's probably going to look upside down to you. I'll just turn things around. So Sandy's saying she's very excited. She hasn't seen her daughter and Nigel for two and a half years because of COVID. I knew it had been a really long time. Okay, so... Right, okay, I'm going to cover you over again because apparently the buttons are working because one of them, one of the reverses, I don't want. Okay, let's see if that's any better. If things are still backwards, I'm just going to live with it. No, hooray. That's really odd. I swear, every time I do a Facebook Live, Facebook have changed something. Um, these little buttons come up to reverse things that way so that my writing here is the right way round and to reverse things front to back as well. And normally when you tap them, they turn blue and you can see they're switched on. They're obviously now not tapping and turning blue um, <laughs> since I did a Facebook update. Thank you, Facebook. That's super helpful. Thank you, Sandy. You're seeing it all the right way around too. That is brilliant. Right, I'm going to move those embellishments out of the way. Um, my son's dog, who I look after during the day, is now barking. So if she keeps going, I shall have to go and let her out. But hopefully she's just seen a squirrel or something. All right. So I promised you a one sheet wonder today. But I thought what I'd do first of all, perhaps, is show you the kind of thing that we're going to end up with. So... I've got two cards which are portrait, vertical format, and I've got two which are landscape format, or horizontal, and the stamped panels on these are all cut from one sheet of A4, so I stamped it and then I cut it up and then I made the cards. So when I say a one sheet wonder, what I mean is that I'm going to stamp a large piece of card and then I'm going to cut it up. You can 
look up One Sheet Wonders on Pinterest and Google and YouTube and there are many 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 plans for stamping and cutting out there so if you would like to know more then do a search and you'll find more of the layouts than you've ever got time to follow but I do really like it I like it for two reasons first of all you can do all your stamping on a big piece of paper which is sometimes a bit more manageable than working smaller and secondly, it, there's a little bit of magic in cutting up something large to make lots of smaller things because you never know exactly what you're going to get. I will show you a way where you can do a little bit of planning for it and get some idea as to what it's going to look like, but there is always that element of surprise which I think is, is really fun. Anne is here. Hello Anne. Lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us. I've also dug out all my embellishments for these, so if I show you this one, this has got the wonderful gems on it, which come in red and gold. I'm hoping they're catching the light. Very sparkly. This one has got, oh, what are these called? I can never remember. Brushed metallic dots. So I used the gold ones on here, so these are a much more of a matte finish. And then I used the gilded gems on this one. In fact, I need a new pack. I haven't got many left. And then I used the wonderful ones on this as well, just the gold ones. So there's lots of scope for using your fancy embellishments. But let's do some stamping. So I am using the Poinsettia Petals stamp set here. I got that really late last year and didn't do very much with it before Christmas last year, but I've been using it a lot this year and I love it. Um, I've got the dies as well, so you can make 3D poinsettias. You've seen me do that um, before on cards here. But I also really like the words in here. Um, Merry Christmas is brilliant. Thank you for making this a wonderful season. Warm wishes from our home to yours, I think is really nice. May magic and wonder bloom this holiday. So they're very usable, I think. You've got holly leaves. You've got a pine branch. You've got um, a poinsettia there with all the different layered petals. And then you've got the individual layers of petals for the poinsettia as well, which you can use on their own or you can die cut them and layer them up. You've got a sprig of berries here. This little stamp will colour in the centre of your poinsettias. And then you've got these three stamps here, which you can use on their own for a much more um, abstract kind of leaf shape. Or you can use them to colour in your flowers, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So that's the stamp set I decided to use. I have a whole load of ink colours, but they're basically reds and greens. So I've got Poppy Parade, Evening Evergreen, Garden Green, Cherry Cobbler, and then just for a little bit of contrast, soft suede. I usually go for early espresso, but um, I felt that was a little bit dark for this, so I've got soft suede for a brown. Then I've got a piece of plain old basic white card. So I'm gonna stamp a whole A4 sheet and I'm gonna have some tea before I say anything else. <laughs> So this is a photopolymer set of stamps and normally I would have my trusty foam mat underneath um, and in fact I've got more than one so I was going to put two underneath so that I'm um, I'm not going to go off the edge of it but actually I don't seem to need it for these stamps. I've got a good pad of paper underneath here so I'm actually not going to use the foam mat. I'm going to turn that over, it's got a bit of a curve in it. All right, so the way I'm going to work this is I'm going to stamp the whole A4 sheet and then I'm basically going to cut it in half that way and in half that way. I will trim those pieces down because like that they will be too big for my standard card fronts. But that's how it's going to work really. So when I'm stamping, I'm going to stamp a cluster of images in the four corners and then I'm going to do one in the middle as well. And so when I cut it, I'm going to have on this piece here the whole corner image and then just a little bit of that one there and I'm going to try to leave more white space on this than I did on my first one. Uh, I did take a photograph of the first stamping that I did and I'll show you afterwards how it's different um, but right I think I'm just going to get started. So I've got this large poinsettia here which I'm going to stamp in Poppy Parade in the corners And 
I'm going to go very slightly off the edge. Next, I'm going to stamp some holly. So I've got the smaller holly leaf here. And I've got garden green ink. And I like this stamped in pairs of leaves where I can. Sometimes you can't, can't quite do that. Hello Kay. That's okay, I've only just started stamping, so you haven't missed very much, don't worry. Fridays are often busy. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm sort of doing the same on each corner, but not exactly. And actually I'm going to turn this round. So this is a little bit closer to me. And you don't have to get this perfect first time. You can always come back and add a bit more. And I almost certainly will do that. You can do it either before you cut or after you cut. So don't stress about getting it exactly the same on all four or getting it right first time round. And if you're thinking, well, she said she was going to stamp in the middle and there's nothing in the middle yet. Well, there will be um, <laughs> because I decided I wanted a bit less in the middle on this one. Um, I'm not going to put the poinsettia there. I'm just going to go with some leaves. So next I'm going to bring in this image, um, if I can find the stamp box I will show you, there it is, it's this one here, and pick that piece of card off it, so I'm going to stamp this off once, this is garden green ink again, so I'm going to stamp it off once so there's less ink on there, and then I'm going to use it just to add a little bit of shading to my holly leaves. So it's quite subtle, but it does take away that very stark um, look of the outline. All I have to do is remember to stamp off each time. It's very easy to forget. I mean, it's not a disaster if you forget, but I would quite like them all the same. Wipe off my block a little bit. As long as I don't wobble my stamp, that green shouldn't transfer, but sometimes it wobbles. So is anybody stamping a one sheet wonder along with me? Let me know. Right, just the ones this side to do. In my opinion, who makes the most astounding one sheet wonders is um, a UK demonstrator called Ruth Trice, and you will find her. I can't remember. Um, Artful Stampin', I think, is the name of her YouTube channel, and she does the most incredible one sheet wonders with lots of colours and lots of stamps on some of them. Uh, and they really are absolutely beautiful. Right, so having done that shading, I'm now going to do a little bit of shading on the 
poinsettias. Oops, I don't think I've put that stamp out. Let's find that. Is that in here? Yeah, that one. So again, I'm going to stamp off once and then stamp on my um, image. Now, this doesn't exactly fit anywhere in particular, but it just adds, you can see that, just a little bit of, of kind of texture and depth to the flower. I'm hoping that's showing. So I do like it on there, even though it's quite subtle. Just kind of turn this around until there's a good a good fit there we are Right, so that's where we are so far. So then I'm going to add some fir branches. So I've got Evening Evergreen ink here, which is a nice darker contrast. getting my head in, in which case I apologise. Let me look and see if any of you are working. So Anne says she likes this stamp set more and more. Yeah, it's lovely, Anne. Have you got it? Or are you... <laughs> Have you just got it on your wish list? It is really lovely. It's very, very versatile. And the dyes in particular are gorgeous. If you, um, if you cut the poinsettias in the velvet paper, either the white or the red, it's absolutely gorgeous. Missed a bit inking that one there. You haven't got it yet. I like the yet in there, Anne. <laughs> no, it is. It's a lovely, lovely set. Okay. I may come back with that. I'm going to call that it for the minute and get some berries in. And if you're wondering, as you stamp, if you're wondering about, you know, what do I need to put where, I can show you a bit of a trick. I've got two pieces of black card here. The black isn't crucial, but pick a dark colour. And then you can use them to effectively cut down... Um, my pieces are half A4, so if I match the top and the sides um, on that half, and then just about halfway down here. So a quarter of my sheet, this corner is going to look like that. And I can do the same there. Or I can do it this way. So you can very quickly see what these are going to look like cut down. So I can see by doing that, that I definitely need a bit more of something here. Um, and I haven't put the berries on yet, so as long as I put some berries over here, in this half, that's going to work fine, I think. But if you're not quite sure where you're going with something, often doing that will show you where you need to add something. So the berries for this are a two-step stamp. There's a berry outline, which is what I'm stamping now using soft suede. And then there's um, an infill, which will colour them red 
or well or whatever I'm using red could do them orange or what have you so tell me how the light is do you need me to put an extra light on? You probably need me to put it on and then you can tell me if that's okay or not. So I've messed up that stamp in there. So let's just recover that. I've got a scrap of card here. So I'm just going to lay that over the bits that are okay. I didn't ink up my stamp properly. And then excuse my head if you're getting that. I'm just going to add in those three berries and I didn't want to re-stamp over those there Sandy's saying the light is good excellent thank you Sandy right I won't change anything then So now I'm going to infill those with cherry cobbler. So because these are photopolymer stamps, you can just look through and fit the stamp in or, um, so that you're, you're colouring in the outline. Uh, and it just takes a minute to kind of get it around the right way and then you can sight it in. So I can see here there's one, two, three berries there. And I've got one, two, three here. So then I just look through the stamp. And then I've added red to my berry centres. And I'm just going to do that all the way around these. Just these in the middle to do. to hold my stamp to fit these in. Like that, there we are. It took me a minute. A minute to get my eye in on that one. I don't know why. There we are. Right, so that's all the berries filled in. And now I'm just going to deal with any little gappy bits like I have here. So I like the holly for filling those in. It's 
very easy to fit in between the flower petals. So you can't necessarily see that it's holly from those bits because there's only a little bit actually on the card. Most of it I've stamped off the edge. But it does just fill in that white area. So I'm going to do that on the other corners. And I'm also adding just a little bit of shading to them as well. This needs something in here, I think. Can I fit a holly leaf in there? Mm. Not really. Okay, I'll come back to that. can't fit a holly leaf in there. Um, let me perhaps pop some berries in there. Uh, not berries, fur, I think. I just need something. There's a lot of white space there. And again, I'm just going to pop this bit of card in. So that I can stamp just part of that pine just there. There we are. Right, where was I? Filling in the gaps. Oh, you're very welcome, Anne. Enjoy your time with your granddaughter and you can always come back and watch the rest of it on the replay. Have a lovely weekend. And that is the joy, isn't it, of video that uh, you can stop it and start it. If you need to see something again, you can re rewind it and watch it again. If you've got to go and collect your granddaughter, you can go off and do that. <laughs> it's wonderful. All righty. So I'm going to move all these inky stamps out of the way. So this is my stamped piece and I'm just going to bring in, I've got a photograph I'll show you of um, the one that I made the cards with. And in fact, let me just turn my grid paper over for a minute so you're not distracted by all the ink that's on it. If you can't, mm, I probably have to lift that up a little bit for you. So that's the one I stamped earlier. You can see I actually had started to cut it, then I decided to put it back together and take a photograph. So my central part here is much larger because I put the poinsettia in there. Um, but I decided that it was just too big when I was cutting it up. There wasn't enough white space left on my pieces of card. Now I don't know whether I can fit all this under the camera at once. Let's see. Let's hold it there and see what you can see. I'd like to show you the one I've stamped as well as the photograph. Let's move it all up. There we are. Okay, you can't see it all, can you? But um, I'm hoping that gives you some idea that this one is a little bit different. So that's all the stamping I'm going to do for the moment. So what I'm going to do next is actually cut it up so this is a4 card so the first thing I'm going to do is just cut it in half now I work in inches as you probably know so if I cut this with the card portrait or with the short edge at the top at four and one eighth of an inch that's exactly cutting it in half that way so now I've got two pieces like that and then if I cut it at five and I think it's 13 sixteenths that's what I'm going to go with anyway that's cutting it in half that way 
it's a funny measurement and it doesn't actually matter if I'm not 100% accurate yet that's it five and thirteen sixteenths which if you've got the stamping up trimmer that's each little individual mark along the inches measurement is a thirteenth so I'm just going for oh, sorry is a sixteenth so I'm cutting at thirteen sixteenths five inches and thirteen sixteenths there we go so already this is starting to look completely different let me turn this over because it's probably very distracting with all that ink sitting there so here is one piece so that was my top top right hand piece and then that one was there and I think that one was there and that one was there I think okay but there's my four pieces so the first thing I can do is look at them and decide if I like them horizontal or vertical portrait uh, or landscape so that goes that way I am going to be trimming these a bit more I do quite like it that way oh I like that too and actually that's nice so I'm somewhere I'm going to be putting a sentiment on here so I could put a sentiment in there, I could put a banner across, so there's lots of things I could do. So I'm going to make a decision on this, I think I'm going to keep it this way round. So I'm now going to cut this to size. Now my matting layer, um, and I put this measurement on Facebook if you had a look at the event. So the contrast card that I'm going to put this on is going to be five and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. which means I'm going to cut my stamped layer an eighth of an inch smaller than that. So I'm going to cut it to five and three eighths of an inch by three and five eighths of an inch. There we go. Hoping you can see that. If you need me to read it to you again, let me know. Thank you, Sandy. Sandy's saying beautiful. Well, that's good to hear. All right, so I want this to end up at three and five eighths of an inch across there, and it's currently just over four. So I'm going to cut conservatively. Um, so this is, let's cut that at three and seven eighths, first of all. So I've cut off that couple of little berries that looked a bit odd. Um, and I quite like that corner like that. So maybe I'll cut some off the other side to make it to three and five eighths. And yes, I think I am. There we are. So that's now the right width. And keep these strips because you might find that you've got a use for them. And then I need to cut this to five and three eighths. So that's just a little bit too much off that end. So I'll cut a little bit off that end, turn it round. Three and five eighths. Pretty much there actually just take the tiniest smidgen off okay so that is now cut to size so now I can look at it do I want to do any more stamping on that anywhere actually I don't other than the sentiment I don't want to do anything else with that mm. and I think I was gonna have it that way but now I'm thinking actually I'm gonna have it that way I think and I have got some little strips of card that I've already cut to stamp my Merry Christmas on. So I'm thinking I quite like a Merry Christmas across there like that. So let me stamp that first. Oh, and I think that one's still in the box as well. Um, yes, it is. Let's pop that on a block. I used these stamps at my card class yesterday, so I've pulled them out, sanitised everything. <laughs> and here we go again. So a very useful set of stamps. OK, I'm lining up my card with my grid paper. So I've used soft suede to stamp this. 
and yeah so I'm thinking across there something like that that's going to be good so let's finish this card off so I've also prepared some card bases and some contrast card layers so I just play around so I've got card in the two reds and the two greens which are evening evergreen garden green cherry cobbler and poppy parade so I'm just going to play around and see what I like Okay, so if that isn't going to fit, that doesn't look like I've measured <laughs> measured something not correctly. Let's have a look. Where's my ruler? So either my matting layer or my white layer is wrong. That's five and a half by three and three quarters. Yeah, that's exactly what that should be. So I think I've probably not measured this right. Let's have a look. Five and three eighths. Yes, I'm too many eighths. There we go. Five and three eighths by three and five eighths yeah there we go I've just not cut enough off the length right so this is on evening evergreen which is nice I'm just going to try it on garden green which I don't think I like as much I think I like it on the darker colour If I'm making cards, this really is how I tend to roll. You know, I'll um, I'll pick a colour scheme, and then I will just try my stamped layer against some other colours. And for me, the darker border around was better. It's a very narrow border because my early uh, evening evergreen card is only an eighth of an inch bigger than my stamped piece but once that's on the red I think that's really effective so I need a portrait card base I've got portrait and landscape ones here so that one is cherry cobbler and this one is poppy parade so let's have a look and see what we think so that's on poppy parade which is the same color as the poinsettia and that is on Cherry Cobbler, so I think I like it better on Poppy Parade. I think that's just a little bit brighter and the dark evening evergreen layer just seems to make it all pop much more on the Poppy Parade. So let's pop that one there. All right, so I need to have some tea. It's Sandy saying Poppy Parade. Good. I'm so glad you said Poppy Parade, Sandy, because if you said Cherry Cobbler, it would all be too late because it's stuck down. <laughs> oh, my tea's going cold. I must have been talking too much. All right, so here is my banner. I must have some scissors on my desk somewhere. There they are. I'm going to pop that on some dimensionals. So then it's just a decision as to where I'm going to pop that. I think up here somewhere looks looks right. There we are. And then I just want some, some bling of some sort. So what have we got? Maybe some gold on this one. Let's pull out some gilded gems. Let's have a big one on the poinsettia and I've used more of the small ones than anything else but I have got some left so let's just pop a few of those scattered around we 
Yeah. So that's my card front done. I'm just going to do the insert. So my insert is the same size as my contrast card layer, which is five and a half by three and three quarter inches. And I'm going to pull in one of these bits that I trimmed off. So I've got this piece here, which has got some stamping on it, but it's also got a lot of bare card. So let's just put something on that. Um, let's bring in a little bit of that evening evergreen pine branch and then I sort of feel actually a little bit more red um, so let's just do a little bit of poppy parade with the poinsettia stamp down this end there we are so now I have a piece of trim for my insert I quite often keep these little thin strips of designer series paper when I'm cutting it and use those on my insert as a decoration if I'm not going to stamp it um, and I can use these in the same way so I'm going to put my Merry Christmas inside as before so this is the, the Merry Christmas that comes with the same stamp set and I'm using soft suede and then I'm going to add that strip across the bottom I won't need it all, just need to glue it up to about here. And again, I use my grid paper to keep that straight. Just line it up with one of the lines this side and follow that across to the other side. Trim the extra off the back got a little bit of glue there right then that's ready to go in my card there we go so there's the inside Side of card number one. Right, so somewhere buried under everything else on my desk is another piece of that stamped card. Here we are. So this needs trimming as well. Um, I'm also aware that I've managed to get an inky fingerprint just there. I'm not sure if you can see, let's lift it up a bit just here. It's not dreadful, but I want to disguise that somehow. So I'm probably going to put the sentiment across there somewhere. Um, so I need to do a little bit of trimming. So I'm thinking that I can take quite a lot off this edge and quite a lot off the top. So I think that's what I will go for. So I want this to be three and five eighths. So I'm not going to take quite that much off there. Let's have a look. Take just a little bit off the bottom. Yeah, there we go. So again, I'm going to keep those two little stamped strips. And then I want my width here to be five and three eighths. So if I take it all off the right hand side, I'm going to lose that holly completely. So I'd like to keep a little bit of holly. Just to add a little bit of extra interest there. Which means just taking a smidgen off that side as well. So you can see I'm just kind of doing it as I go. Uh, um, there's no huge planning. Certainly there wasn't planning before... Um, I did the stamping beyond doing something in each corner and something in the middle. Um, and in terms of the trimming, I just look at each piece and think, OK, you know, what do I like? What am I not bothered about? What would I not mind cutting off? And then I go with that. So, yeah, this to me is definitely needs to go landscape like a horizontal. 
So we have, again, Garden Green, which I'm quite liking on that, actually. Or we have Evening Evergreen. Let me know what you think. Garden Green or this one, Evening Evergreen? So I'm going to pause and see if anyone's got any strong opinions one way or the other as to what I should use for my card layer. If you haven't, I shall, <laughs> I shall choose. <laughs> While I'm waiting for you to tell me, let me grab one of those sentiment strips and stamp that. So I'm going to stick with soft suede for my words because I'm, I'm liking that as a, a contrast for the green from the green and red. So Sandy's saying lovely as it is. So I'm assuming by that, Sandy, that you mean this colour layer, which is evening evergreen. Okay. So I've just trimmed the excess off that. Nobody else is saying anything right. Well, let's go with this then. And then, oh yes, I'm thinking, thinking Poppy Parade here actually because, not Poppy Parade, sorry, Cherry Cobbler. There's a lot of berries on this and I'm liking the Cherry Cobbler. So I'm not actually going to ask you because if somebody says Poppy Parade, I don't want to change it. So I'm just going to glue this down <laughs> quickly before somebody says, no, no, Poppy Parade. There we are. Once again, I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. Stuck two down there, never mind. There's my inky fingerprint, so I definitely need to cover that up. There we are. So that's that problem solved. Now I just need some embellishments on here. Hmm. I think if I can find them, maybe some of these. I do like these gold ones they're quite quite subtle and they're quite sweet kind of dotted around and every single one is different it's just as if somebody um, had these little resin bits wet and then sprinkled some glitter over the top of them and it's kind of landed where it will and they're all different some are really glittery and some have just got a little hint so that's card number two need an insert for that and once again I'm going to use one of these stamped pieces this one's a little bit wider um, and it's got quite a lot of color on it which is nice I'm just going to add a little bit of holly I think just in in these gaps and a bit of holly shading And then I'll stamp 
my Merry Christmas again. Just one minute. No. I was, I was wondering whether to change what I put inside, but I'm going to stick with Merry Christmas for the very practical reason that I haven't got any more spare blocks. They're all still packed with my stuff from my class yesterday. So if I want something different, I'm going to have to start putting these inky stamps off the blocks, which doesn't sound like a very good idea, given that I've already got inky fingerprints on what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to stay with Merry Christmas, which is fine. It's fine as a greeting. So when I've done a class, I leave everything packed in the boxes for many days to quarantine it so that anything nasty can die. And then I take everything out and sanitise it. Which means that my craft room looks like a bomb has hit it most of the time. And for those of you who've been in my craft room, it looks even more like a bomb has hit it. <laughs> because I've got these boxes stacked up everywhere. But it seems the safest way to deal with things to me. And we have all kinds of precautions going on in my classes. Everybody's very careful. Um... But it doesn't hurt to be super careful, I don't think. As I want to keep myself safe and I certainly want to keep everyone who comes to classes safe. So my blocks are in quarantine. There we are. So that's the inside of that one. Right, two more to go. How are we doing for time? Three o'clock, that's okay. So this one... Hmm, I was thinking that one's definitely going to go like that, but now I'm looking at it and thinking, ooh, maybe like that. Maybe like that. What will it look like with words here? Yeah, let's do it that way, because that's just a bit different, isn't it? So once again, we need to cut width to three and five eighths. I don't want to cut too much off this size. I cut a little bit off but I want most of it to come off the other side otherwise I'm going to completely lose that here and I might actually pop another holly leaf on there. There we go. That was a bold cut and then I need to cut it to five and three eighths. There we are. So yeah, I definitely want another holly leaf there. That just looks a little bit imbalanced to me because it's all up the side and there's nothing along the bottom. So let's just add one more holly leaf and a bit of the holly leaf shading. There we are. So for me, that just looks a little bit more balanced. And I could, I could stamp directly on here. Let's do that because we haven't done that yet. So we're back to the layers. So this is garden green. And this is evening evergreen. Yeah, I'm going to go with that again. I just think that darker colour is a really nice contrast to everything else. And look, can you see I've just managed to get inky fingerprints on this again, honestly. I'm so messy today. I ought really to go and wash my hands. So that's obviously going to be an embellishment opportunity. <laughs> I need to stick something over there. I am going to grab a baby wipe and just try and wipe my hands because I must have picked that ink up when I stamped that extra holly leaf, I think. 
see if I can get my hands clean. I am pretty inky. At least it wasn't red. Red seems to always be the colour that transfers. Right. Okay, so I was going to use some of the wonderful gems on the berries, but actually I need to cover these over. So I think I'm going to have to put something gold there just to distract the eye a little bit. So let's cover that one over. That one over. And then we'll repeat something similar so it looks intentional. And then let's pop one more of these. Print is gone, thank heavens. And I need a portrait base. Ooh, and I'm only finding the landscape ones. Have a look. Oh no, here we go. This one's portrait. Right, we will have to use. Uh, actually that's nice I don't have a poppy parade one so I haven't even got to make a decision on this I haven't used any ribbon yet I did actually bring out some ribbon I've got this lovely golden cherry cobbler ribbon and I've got some of the gold shimmer ribbon Probably don't need this now. I've got those gold embellishments on there, but let's just have a little look. Yeah, it's going to cover over my stamping, so I need to plan for ribbon, which I did not do. So here's my insert. for the strips that one I think that's got lots and lots of nice colour on it already there's something satisfying about using a little skinny strip like this that was just really an off cut and finding a use for it on my card I'm sure I'm not alone in that I know how popular my cards from scraps videos have been, so <laughs> I know you all keep all these little bits. That is card number three. Now, I've only got landscape card bases left, so we're going to make a landscape card. <laughs> okay. I think it's, it definitely, I think, needs to go that way. I'll turn it around. Let's look at it the other way. No, it needs to go that way, to my eye. Um, Everybody, of course, sees things differently. I'm going to cut a little bit off that side and cut most of it off this side. Five and three eighths of an inch is what I want. There we are. And then I want this to be three and five eighths of an inch deep. bit 
bit off there. And the rest of it off there. And now I've trimmed that. Mm, no, no, I am going to do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to need a banner for the words because this space here isn't quite big enough for me to stamp directly on the card. Let's just get that nice and straight. straight I don't think it is let's do another one right I'm going to lean in if you're getting the top of my head my apologies let's see if I can actually get this straight so that looks better I think probably going to go yeah somewhere like that right so I've only got a poppy parade card base left but I have got lots of mats and layers oh no I haven't no I have got a cherry cobbler one so look we've still got all the options so garden green or no it's gonna be evening evergreen again isn't it that darker green is is what I want so it's then, do we go rich and dark with cherry cobbler, which I like, or do we go bright with poppy parade? Now that's too bright, I think, for this one. Perhaps because we've got lots of these berries on here, but for me, it looks better on a cherry cobbler card base. I mean, they both coordinate because we've got the same ink colours and card colours, but I'm going dark this time. making sure I've got my card base around the right way. It wouldn't be the first time I've made a card where the fold was on the right instead of the left. And I want some dimensionals for my banner. I've got a gap there which is slightly annoying me so I'm thinking I might might put that just a little bit higher than I had thought yeah all right so let's use some of these red gems on some of the berries so I'm not going to put a gem on every berry but I am going to kind of Dot them around a bit. There. I'm liking that. And I'm still wondering about some ribbon. 
Um, let's see. Let's tie this on and see what we think. It might be overkill. Okay, ladies, what do we think? Do we think with or without a bow? I haven't trimmed the ends yet, obviously. Wait and see. So Carol's going. Bye bye, Carol. Have a good weekend. Just waiting to see if there's a comment. I think I know what I think. But let's see if anybody else thinks anything in particular. Okay, so let's get rid of the ribbon and we're going to leave it relatively plain. And I have an insert here and let me have a look amongst my little trimmed pieces here. Oh, Maureen said she prefers without. Good, Maureen. Thank you very much. Yes, I do too. I think there is quite a lag on the comments here. So I only just saw that, but um, I'd already taken the ribbon off, so, <laughs> so we're fine. Yeah, I think that would be quite nice in there that way. I'm just going to add a little bit of shading to those poinsettia petals here. Just needs a little, a little something in there. change I'm going to put that absolutely flush with the edge and then I just need my words in the middle and we are there card number four done Yeah. So that is the last one. My desk looks like a bomb has hit it. I'll put a photo on when I've finished of the crafter math. But let me try and at least clear a little bit of space and then I can put all four of those out for you to see. So interesting, we went with two portrait and two landscape and three in cherry cobbler and one in poppy parade in the end and all the contrast card layers are evening evergreen so four completely different cards um, just from stamping one piece of card and cutting it up I think it's really interesting how different they are, I mean they're obviously related, it's the same stamp set, the same colours, but they are all different and if you're a bit like me and you hate making multiples of the same card, this is a good way to um, gain kind of the time benefits of multiple card making because it's definitely quicker to make lots of cards the same, but at the same time not have them all identical. 
So thank you, Sandy. Uh, I'm pleased with them. I look forward to seeing what you create. I'm sure you'll be going home and doing something amazing. And I love that you share your photos. If anybody else makes any cards inspired by today's session, do pop a photo up. You should be able to put a photo into the comments and I would really, really love to see it. So I am just going to turn you back up to me so I can say a proper goodbye and just give you a reminder about next time. So let me just cover you over there so you don't feel sick. Hopefully that's all up the right way and I've pressed the right buttons. Yes, hooray. Okay, so thank you very much indeed for joining me. It's starting to get quite gloomy outside. Now, I don't know what it's like with you. Um, I don't know what the weather's going to do this weekend, but uh, I shan't be outside very much anyway. So fortunately, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much for joining me. Next week, I will not be here. Please don't come here next Friday. Um, I'm attending Stamping Up's virtual con convention. We can't meet in person this year, but we will be meeting virtually. So I've got a two and a half day convention next week, Thursday afternoon, all day Friday and all day Saturday. I won't have ch a chance, I'm afraid, to pre-record a video and schedule it to pop up at two o'clock next week. So I'm sorry about that, but I will really look forward to seeing you the week after. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do the week after. Let me just tell you what date that is. Uh, that will be the 19th of November. Not sure what I'm going to do. I've got a couple of ideas buzzing around in my head, but I will make an event on Facebook to tell you what I'll be doing and to suggest any materials you might like to have by you if you want to craft along. So do watch out for that in about a week. Um, until then, have a lovely weekend. I hope there's some crafting in your diary for the weekend. And I'll see you again soon, but not next week. Two weeks today, the 19th. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.